you guys, let me ask you guys a question. What's something that you love that has gone viral? No. Yeah. Taylor Swift has indeed gone viral. Um, what's something, maybe, maybe not current, but what's something that you used to love that went viral? How's that for a question? Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Something you used to love that went viral. Anything else? For instance, fidget spinners would be an example. Like, you once loved and it went viral, but maybe you don't anymore. Okay? What was that? Poppets. Is that like the, like the, like bop it? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying now. Yeah, okay. Pop rocks? Oh, Bob Ross. Happy trees, happy trees. Anything else? My son still loves that. Yeah. Um, well, depends on which one. Zeke was the one. He's five now. He's, he's kind of ishy about it now. Roblox? Okay. Anything else? Something you used to love that went viral. Do what? We, you, what? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 Nintendo. Say that again. Painting rocks. Did anybody have like pet rocks as a kid? Has anybody seen the new Minion movie? Where the minion trades the, the valuable, you know, whatever for a pet rock. Because he falls in love with the pet rock. It's, it, anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Fun stuff. Uh, let me tell you something that, was, that everybody was doing when I was in middle school. Um, is uh, skinny jeans weren't a thing. It was the baggy jeans. They're kind of starting to come back, but they're coming back different. They were like, like they would be like halfway down your butt and like super baggy. And then like everybody was always walking around like pulling their pants up, you know. Um, I do that anyway just because of my waist, but I have a weird body type that doesn't keep any pants up. Um, or or uh, what, what used to be fun was, uh, anybody, can anybody snap? Who can snap? Okay. So... So this is what we used to do, okay? We would walk by in the school, and we'd be like, and you'd catch it, and throw it back, and then kind of like the whoa, but yeah. So, so somebody come demonstrate the whoa. Okay, could just come on up front, show, show everybody. AJ and Mary. And Andrew. Oh, your dad. Sorry, Matthew. Okay. That was, that was lame. You throw it to her. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so it was like that, except we would, just, we would just walk in the hall sometimes. We would just, like, throw it to each other. And then sometimes it was, like, crazy spin, like, and then people would like catch it, like as it, it, it was really dumb, but we would just do it in the hallway at school. And so uh, we thought we were so cool though. So there's things that like, that are, are super, like everybody does it, kind of viral things that, that then nobody does after that. And uh, it's funny because as, as, as quickly as they come, they go away, right? Have you guys noticed that this about viral trends? As, as soon as they get here, it's like just as fast as they got here, they go away. Uh, and, and, Fidget spinners is one of those. Like for a while, fidget spinners were so expensive because everybody wanted them, but then all the teachers confiscated all of them in the universe, and so they, they, like, they were not in existence anymore, and then they were really cheap. Like, 
Pokemon is a perfect example. We used to trade Pokemon cards. Does anybody still do that? Yeah. Now it's Pokemon Go. But, like, it got banned from my school and elementary school because everybody was trading the cards, and then parents were upset because of all the cards they bought. Little Timmy were so expensive, and they just traded them away. Anyway, so, <laughs> anyway, you, you, get, you get the point. Good. I like the hands. That means you get the point. So, uh, the, the, reality, the reality is that, that what's trending and what's popular is like this, right? Like, it's real popular, and then it's not. And then something else is really popular, and then it's not. Like, it just cycles, right? And then things change. And uh, what was popular yesterday won't be popular tomorrow. You guys, you, you, you understand what I'm saying. Taylor Swift is one of those that I wish would just go down more often because I don't like her. But actually, it's, it's, never mind. Anyway, I know I'm offending some people in the room, but that's okay. That's my hot take. I think she's overrated. Um, but... I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just ticked off the whole room, um, but, <laughs> okay, okay, Who, who's somebody you think is overrated? What? <laughs> I agree, yes. Influencers that think they're cool? People that still play Among Us. That was a viral trend. Everybody was playing Among Us, like, what, a year ago? Yeah, two years ago, maybe? Okay, okay, so, so moving on, we've made the point loud and clear, which is good. You get the point. There's things that are like this and, and that are popular for a while and then go down, and then to the next thing. So here, here's what is true about life, okay? What, what's true for you and what's often true for me is... Our feelings are often like this and this. Specifically the feelings about how we feel about ourselves. So like, uh, imagine, imagine you, uh, you wake up one day and you got all A's. So mom and dad's not hounding you about your grades. You also have no homework. So life's easy. Um, the, the popular girl or the popular guy, you know, that you've been eyeing for, for a while has noticed you and, and you've been DMing back, back and forth, you know, and... and and so things, things are looking up, they're looking positive, you know, future prospects of uh, some romance. And then, uh, and, then, and then not only that, but your favorite movie has come out on the day that you made the starting position on the team or, or you landed the audition and you, and you got the role. And, and you, you're just feeling like you're on cloud nine, like everything is going your way. In fact, you scored the winning shot at the game last week. And, which is what got you the starting position this week. And, and so the whole school recognizes how awesome you are and everybody's complimenting you and like, hey, way to go. You're feeling like this about yourself, right? You're feeling pretty good, okay? But next week, I got some bad news. That person that, that you thought was, that, like, you really liked, you started dating over the weekend, but they broke up with you um, at lunch in front of everybody. And, and then on top of that, uh, you were so upset that you just kind of didn't show up to practice. And so you lost the part that you had landed there. Um, and, and then to, you, you're so heartbroken that, that you didn't study for the test. And, and yeah, I know. So now you're failing a class because, because this was a test that was worth a lot of points on your grade. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you went from feeling like this about yourself, like, oh, I'm so cool, everybody loves me, to like now, oh, everybody hates Among Us now, and you're still the only one playing it at lunch, and, and like, you're just, feeling, you're just feeling terrible about yourself, right? And, and so, so it's, it's funny how, how one day you were up here and you felt great about yourself, and the next day you feel like the worst person in the world, that nobody likes you. And, and on top of it, you woke up with a zit this morning, and, and you just feel ugly. And so, like, yeah, and so it's just, it's just, life's not, it's suddenly not looking the best for you, right? Here, here, here's the thing. Many of us, I know, I'm, I'm, we're, we're, we're having fun, right? But, but the reality is that's, that's kind of true about life, right? Like, there's days we feel great about ourselves, and there's days that we don't feel great about ourselves. There's days we feel like we're awesome and we, we're the stuff. We got all, this, all of life figured out and people should want to be like me. If I were you, I'd want to be me too. I'd want to. Is that Taylor Swift? 
Oh, that's Mega Trainer. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so same thing. But <laughs> actually, funny story. Uh, Zeke and Ezra were both whining at us last night during dinner, so I just ignored him and I turned on No by Megan Trainer. <laughs> and we had a little dance party, and I said, "Hey, I have one thing to say to you." And they're like, "What?" No, no, no. My name is No. My sign is No. And yeah, and so I said, "You need to let it go," because they were just asking the same question. Anyway, that's beside the point. Not the same thing as Taylor Swift. I'm sorry, but Megan Trainer's a little better. But. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to get off the Taylor Swift topic because I'm going to make enemies out of you guys. All right. But, but you, get, you get the point of what I'm saying, right? It is when we feel good, we feel valuable. Okay? But, but just as quickly as, as, you know, we can feel great about something, we can also feel pretty terrible about ourselves. When we, when we think we're only great when other people say we're awesome or when we make our opinions the first place, or when we make other people's opinions the first place we go when we think about our own worth, our own value, when we base the way that we see ourselves by the way that other people see us, that's a terrible recipe for constantly having low self-esteem and, and feeling terrible about yourself. Because other people's opinions about you will change over time, and also they don't, they don't matter quite as much, right? I mean, you should care about what people think about you because it, it, it helps us to, you know, like, try to meet people where they're at, but at the same time, like, other people's opinion of you does not define you. And sometimes people's opinions of you are stupid, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't listen to them anyway, right? Um, and, and so there, there's just things in life, if, if we base our own worth based on how we're feeling in the moment, based on our current accomplishments or lack thereof, or, or based on what other people seem to be saying about us, uh, maybe you post something and, like, it gets two likes, and like, you're like, oh, well, well uh, nobody cares about me. Boo-hoo. Or, or maybe you posted something, or, or it was your birthday, and everybody was, was tagging you and wishing you happy birthday, and you felt great. Like, just depending on the day. If you base how you feel about yourself based on all of these other things, you're going to wake up most days feeling pretty terrible about yourself. And in fact, this is so much more relevant for your generation than it was mine, because when I was your age, I didn't have a smartphone where all my friends could follow me around and make me feel terrible about myself all day long. Like, it was just like I would leave school and then it would, it would go away. But uh, you live in a world that's like constant comparison. It's like, even if you have like a good mental health life, having social media will quickly flush that down the toilet if you're not careful. That's why limits are good. Uh, but, but the reality, is, and there's, there's some crazy studies that have been done that's it's pretty evident, like there's a, a, a pretty strong correlation to like social media usage and low self-esteem. Like people who are on social media a lot tend to have lower self-esteem and have like confidence issues. That's, that's just, that's been studied in a lot of different things. And so that's, that's kind of just something to think about. And, and so I know not all of you are on social media. Some of you are. So for those of you who are, just consider that. Because if we based our, our worth on those things, we're going to feel down and out more often than not. So the, the good news is that people have been struggling with this as long as people have existed. And so going back uh, to, to the Gospel of Luke, um, do you guys, do you know what makes Luke different from some of the other Gospel writers? His Luke, his name, yeah. What else? Mark and John are also the same amount of, of letters. But good try. What else? Do you know? He was a doctor. Yeah. So he's analytically minded. He was also a Gentile, which means he wasn't Jewish, like Matthew, Mark, or Luke. Or, sorry, Matthew, Mark, or John. So he, he, came, he comes at things with a little bit of a different perspective. He, he's pretty analytical. But anyway, he, he's, he's writing down about this interaction. Um, and uh, and he, he's talking about, you guys remember the Pharisees? They're the religious leaders who didn't like Jesus because Jesus was hanging out with all the people that they thought Jesus shouldn't be hanging out with. Somebody in Jesus' position, a great teacher and, and all that kind of stuff, they shouldn't be hanging out with, like, sinners and tax collectors like Matthew, right? They, they shouldn't, like Matthew, no, I'm just kidding, like the, the apostle Matthew. But uh, the, that's basically, they're, they're going, they, they didn't like Jesus for all those reasons. And so Jesus, they start questioning him uh, about all this kind of stuff, uh, about his choice in friends, how he chooses to respond to, to certain people, 
um, how he actually does acknowledge people that are supposed to be unclean and you're not supposed to interact with. They're asking Jesus questions about this kind of stuff. And Jesus decides to tell them this story. Check this out. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together all his friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. Except for that's not how a shepherd would respond. Which is kind of funny. Because he presents it as if, doesn't he just go and look for the sheep? Well, no. All the people there are going, no, a shepherd doesn't leave 99 healthy sheep unattended in the wilderness to go find one that got lost. Now, sheep are really valuable. Like, you could, you could use their wool for, for stuff. They, they, if you had lots of sheep, it means you were wealthy, basically. And, uh, and so, uh, it would be kind of insane to leave 99 of them to go find one that got lost. But Jesus presents this in, in such a way, he's like, no. Every sheep is important to that shepherd. And if one gets lost, he goes and looks for it. And when he comes home, he throws a party. He celebrates. He's excited. And this is what he says next. He says, in the same way, there's more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and have not strayed away. The, the riddle of that is that there is nobody who hasn't strayed away. All of us have. All of us have been lost sheep at one point or another. And Jesus is saying, there's more rejoicing, there's more joy in, in somebody coming back and being found than, than somebody who just never needs to be found at all. It's kind of crazy. It, it goes to show us the worth that we actually have. Because whether you're feeling great about yourself or not, the truth is God loves you and he finds you incredibly valuable. And the story is a metaphor for you and me. Like, we are the lost sheep. We are the ones who, who go our own way. We are the, we are the ones who uh, are, are stuck in a world of sin right now. But Jesus pursues us. You can make the worst mistake. You can wake up with 20 zits on your face, and, and you know what? Well, because earlier I was telling the story about, you know, your worst day, right? But you could, you could, you could wake up in the worst place ever, and feel terrible about yourself. You could have been dumped. You could have nobody like your posts. You could, you could, you know, all the bad things that we talked about earlier. And that doesn't define who you are or your worth because Jesus will pursue you. Jesus cares about you. Jesus finds you intrinsically valuable, which means nobody can take your value away. And when we place our value in what other people's opinions of us are, that's a recipe for being disappointed for a long time. And over time, that will make us more and more depressed. But recognizing the truth that God loves us for who we are it is incredibly uh, encouraging, and it will be a game changer. Once you understand this, once God's opinion of you takes first place in your life, this will change how you think, how you view yourself, and whose approval you need. Okay, this will make you less susceptible to peer pressure and all that kind of stuff. God determines your value. Nobody else does. So if we want to know how God feels about us, we should look to his word to see how he describes his love for us. And that will transform our lives. This is what Jesus replied. This is the verse we've been going back to this whole series. It is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. To love your neighbor as yourself. This, this is the most important thing that, that we should focus on. Loving God and loving others as we love ourselves. But we should remember when it comes to our value, our ability to fulfill that, well, well we should always be striving to do that best, is, is not what defines us. Because we're going to fail. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall short in, in, in many ways. But it's not what we do or don't do that defines our value. It's God, our creator, who defines our value. So, no matter how much you think you've messed up, no matter how far you think you've gone from God, uh, no matter what people at school may say about you, no matter how good or things, uh, uh, how, how good or bad things in life might seem for you in the moment, God determines your value. And he loves you more than you can possibly imagine. So as you guys get ready to go to your groups, I want you to think about this. Uh, what's one place you normally look for your value? Maybe subconsciously. Maybe it's something you're aware of. But what's a place that you normally look for to determine your worth?
Let me pray. And I want you guys to have some small group discussion about this, and then we'll be done for the day.